I said, we're going to take it away from Italy as punishment, and we're going to give it back to the Greeks. So my father lost his job at the lighthouse, goes back to the island, and marries my mom, because that's another whole big story that you know, maybe you're going to hear someday, uh, and um, has me, and came to America in 1949. And my father spoke fluent Italian, fluent Greek, no English. So he started, the only job he could get was busboy, either, either washing the dishes or being a busboy. And he worked in a restaurant called Long Champs. Uh, Jan Mitchell owned Long Champs. And uh, Jan Mitchell, who I got to know well in later years, uh, and he had like 30 long chair stores and 10 blue chairs. And my father was the bus boy. But on weekends, he would go to Astoria, where all the Italians were, all the Italian restaurants. And he would, because he spoke fluent Italian, he'd be a waiter. So, look, he worked seven days a week whether it was for his sisters, his mom, or, or my mom, mm -hmm. me, to be able to, to put food on the table and never have to go to his brothers for money. And he taught me philotimo. It's a Greek word that doesn't design a dictionary. Philotimo means pride for your heritage, pride for your family, uh, not to uh, do anything to ruin your family name. And, and that's very important when you're, you're regardless. And we grew up, I went to public schools, I would grew up on 135th Street, went to public schools, I ended up going to one of the greatest high schools in our city, Brooklyn Tech, and then New York University, even though I had a congressional nomination for West Point. But I was an only child. Is my mom gonna let me go to West Point? Is my dad? My dad yelled. My mom cried. Where are you gonna leave us? Well, where do I go from here? I went to NYU Uptown Campus from being, thinking of going to West Point, and I, I took the ROTC, and then, you know, NYU Uptown Campus, the SDS, oh. Students for a Democratic Society. We got the ROTC, we got pies to go Yeah. Work, 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 you know, uh, I, I believed in America. Don't forget, by the way, our economic system right now, what, what's going on? My father, his, when he came to America, his two brothers had to sign and say, if you can't pay your bills, his brothers had to do it. Yep. So that's why, that's why he, uh, he didn't want to shame himself. Mm. Um, he always worked hard seven days a week. Where I, got, I guess I got my work in there. My mother was a very educated woman from Constantinople, and uh, it was the seat of education at that time. And uh, her grandfather was the chancellor at the picture. Maybe I got my, my religion from that. But at some point, I didn't know what I wanted to be. I didn't know what I wanted to, to, to go. So you know what I did? I said to myself, if I'm not sure, I'm going to do it all. <laughs> you know, I did all the charities I can do because I, I believe in giving back. You know, uh, Mr. Morgan thought the police athletic league, uh, God rest his soul, worked so hard for the kids in the inner city. You know what I ran? When I ran for mayor in 2013, I ran as a Republican liberal. 
Republican? Yes, I'm a Republican. Why I was a liberal? You know why I was a liberal? Because I was I believed in helping those poor kids of the inner city. When you see these kids, you want to cry. And if Mr. Moore, I got my training from Mr. Moore, I thought. And it's these people, these kids have no place to go. Nothing to do because all the kids in Harlem, Bedford status, they either have a mother or a father. So when they get out of school in Harlem, they end up going to, what, what, what do we call it? The candy store, the pizza store. I remember buying a pizza was 25 cents, 15 cents for the pizza, 10 cents for the soda. <laughs> and if they didn't have a room to go to, they got in trouble. They got in trouble. And the guy will be pull, pull up in a big El Dorado. Hey, kid, you want to have an El Dorado too? And teach them the drug business or teach them. And this is not what we want for our kids. Our kids of the inner city. It's so important that we put them on the right road. And that's why I ran as a Republican liberal, because I believe in helping the American poor. I believe in helping uh, our inner city kids, most of our kids. We did, me and Margo, we did all the diseases. She was on the board of Alzheimer's. She was on the board uh, uh, of uh, what, Princess Gosman under the time, was it? Parkinson's with uh, Paige Black. I love Paige Black. Uh, I'll tell you something that happened to her. She it was tragic. Uh, I, I have uh, my family's diabetes, so I, I did diabetes. We did it all. So we did all the charities. We did all the diseases. We did all the religions. I was a member of Rabbi Schneider's board uh, for 30 years. I talked to Rabbi Schneider this morning. I, you know. Uh, Catholics, we do everything. <laughs> so if you're not sure what to do in life, do it all. <laughs> because you don't want to uh, have regrets. You don't know, oh, is the umbrella coming out? <laughs> yeah, the umbrella gets up and I talk too much, the umbrella comes out. Yeah, I'd rather do, I'd rather do uh, a couple of questions because, you know, there's, there's so many things going on in our world. I mean, I don't want to go too deeply into politics. Uh, we have the number one show. Now. Yeah. The number one show. Yay! is the strongest and the most powerful radio station on the East Coast. And we fight so many wars. And, and you know what I say at the end of every show? Truth, justice, and the American way. Amen. I'll take a couple of questions. Thank you for coming here and honoring us. I want you to know that this, today I was in my swimming, not my swimming, gym swimming pool. Right? That's a question. I met, I met somebody a question. Right, question. swimming next to me. And I have to share this story. She said that she remembered she was a pharmacist when she worked at a pharmacy on the Upper West Side. And she remembered you in the beginning. You would bring food that hadn't expired, but it was near the expiration date. And you would give it out to the homeless. You said you didn't want to see it wasted. So maybe you want to just tell us a little bit about the story. She can do that. I did it for all. The first store, the second store actually I worked on was at 99th Street in Brooklyn. And the poor people that come in, and I felt so bad. They would, I remember, you know, I, started, I told you about pizza and, and, and a can of Coke. Poor people come in, buy a can of Figaro tuna. I don't know if you know what Figaro tuna is. Figaro tuna was, was tuna made by bumblebee that was for cats. Oh, oh no. Oh. Yeah. It won't kill you, but the thought. Wow. <laughs> so then they would come they would come in, oh. buy a can of Figaro tuna for fifteen cents oh. and buy a roll for ten cents. Oh. And they make me open up the can, 
put the front row to in the row, yeah. and that was the end. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the other thing I said, uh, if people are hungry and they stole a loaf of bread, I've never put anybody in jail or have them arrested for stealing a loaf of bread because they're hungry. But what New York has come to is professional, professional crime. When they go in and they steal, and if they steal right now the way the district attorney is, if they steal less than, there's no crime. So I joke around on my radio show that we used to carry Anybody old enough to remember Rocky Calavito? Yeah. Rocky Calavito bats. That's right. Rocky Calavito must have been six foot, seven feet tall in that bat. I never hit anybody. <laughs> and then, you know, in 20 years of working in the stores, I never hit anybody. But when those shot left the store, that Rocky Calavito bat, <laughs> they left. Oh. And, and, and it's. Oh. Right now, we are fighting the law of the jungle. Right. Yeah. We're in the jungle now. Yeah. And the strongest are going to survive. And, and we're in deep uh, doo-doo. And um, our supermarkets, well, the truth is, we're not making any money. We're just trying to survive until everything else, the next cycle comes along. Uh, we need, I, I told Governor Hopeful, requested a meeting with me. I'm going to go to the meeting just as long as the governor. Uh, and I met with Eric Adams. And I said, look, if somebody steals a loaf of bread, we don't want them, you know, don't, don't arrest them. But professional, violent criminals, all three average, all three, professional, Violent criminals and people that throw people off the subways. Those people do not belong living with you know civilized people. Amen. 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 Uh, one question she said it's very important. It's about food, which we all food. They're gonna take away the coal fire ovens. Pizza. Pizza. I, I, we, we, we yelled about it yesterday on our show. And you know what it is? It, uh, somebody's paying. I mean, why would anybody care about it? Maybe there's a hundred coal fire, uh, fire pizza stores or, or firewood. Somebody's paying somebody to push it. Yep. You know how yep. the city council does these days? If, if, if I'm a, a city council person, and you're all my friends, all 51 city council people, oh, aren't you going to do it for me? I won't do it for you if you don't do it for me. So somebody got paid. And otherwise, it's silly. Why am I going after 100? I'm 100. That's all there is. I mean, it's, it's, it's horrible. And... Uh, we're stepping up and down, we're stopping. The other thing that uh, I was very emotional about, and I mentioned it uh, a couple of months ago when they were putting 5G antennas on, on, on uh, Madison Avenue. Those 5G antennas, it's like living below the Alpine Tower. And you remember, it's not when, it's not if you're gonna get cancer, it's when you're gonna get cancer. Okay, nobody wants to live underneath the Alpine Tower. Now they're putting the 5G antennas. They wanted to put them in, and I heard that it got it approved. So if somebody better look into it. They want to put them up in the Madison Avenue. And an independent study made by the New Hampshire study, and if uh, I can send it to you and you distribute it, says that you, you have to be, human beings have to be 1,560 feet away from a 5G antenna. Wow. Well, guess what? If you put them outside people's windows on Madison Avenue, somebody's going to die. Oh, God. So there's so many problems. And you know what it is? A golden expression in politics? Follow the money. Yeah. Somebody paid something. And 
Yep. And I just had to go my show as Bob was not. Uh, and my daughter, you know, there's three Republican events I have to hit. So my daughter's having one. We have a beautiful party for me today. After this party, I'm going to my daughter's party that she he has. So she has a, a representative, uh, was it Curry, James Curry, uh, Congressman from, from, uh, from Kentucky. Good. And, and uh, guess what? She, she uh, and he's the one that's investigating uh, Hunter Biden. And I just had him on the show at five o'clock. The Patriot. And I said, how can, how can the FBI director not do anything about all this stuff going on? And he shocked me. He says, there's other people around the FBI director, FBI director Ray, and he doesn't think he knows about it. All the other stuff that's going on. Marco, can he have enough time to sign two books? Yes, of course I'm going to sign two books. That's why I was trying to write books. So, right, so I got my daughter's event, well, who runs the Liberty Club, and usually a lot of our events are here, I think. Uh, but this was big crap. Uh, with this guy, Comer. 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 Robert Comer. James Cutler, Kentucky. <laughs> and and uh, then Larry Cutler was having an event for this guy running for president. Anybody know? Uh, and uh, what's his name? Vivian. Oh, if you pay me $1,000 cash right now, I can't pronounce his last name. Oh, good question. Good question. CNN, CNN deserves to live. Yeah. Fox does a good job. But they're only in 10 or 15 countries. You ready? CNN is in 185 countries. Yeah. Wow. Those 185 countries is not getting the truth. I got annoyed when they only have 400,000 viewers at night. A big deal, 400,000 for the whole country. That's chunk change. Ted Turner, if he, if he was dead, you could turn him his gray. Is that that? I would bring Ted Turner back. Uh, and he, uh, and the, the, the key thing is, they were in 100, either 185 countries or 200 countries. That you, know you know what those 200 countries are getting? False news. Yep. And if I, listen, if I'm going to accomplish one more thing in life, I don't mind money CNN. Yay! Yay. 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 I mean, those, those people deserve to know the truth. Yep. And, you know, that's, It'll make you free. You know, okay, now it's time to say now it's time to say it all. <laughs> Very good. So, listen, I hope you enjoy the book. The book is on the bestsellers list. And you know who buy it? A lot of grandmothers, grandfathers, giving it to their kids, a lot of mothers and fathers, hoping it would make a difference in their kids' lives or their grandkids' lives. And that's what and I hope you enjoy it. Um, and make sure you listen to my show. Uh, that, you can get it on WABC Radio.com. Is it from 7 to midnight? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Thank you. We gotta save America, guys. And one more thing. This November, 51 city council seats are open out of 51. So you want to make a difference, make sure everybody goes to vote. Yep. Yep.